Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. It rained heavily earlier. A light rain falling now. Temperature cool in the 70s. Humidity is over 90%. We could see some showers throughout the afternoon here in Tampa Bay as the Bucks and the Panthers get ready to roll. And Carolina, if you go back to last year, they've won seven consecutive regular season games. That's the longest current streak in the league. Again, regular season. And the year they started out 5-0, they went on to the Super Bowl against rookie Jameis Winston, trying to even the Buccaneers' record. Carolina won the coin toss. They deferred Graham Gano to kick off. Ten touchbacks in 16 tries through the first three games. He led the NFL in touchback percentage in each of the last two years. Bobby Rainey back to receive for the Buccaneers. He's the only Tampa player with a punt or kick return this year. Sure-handed Bobby Rainey if he gets the chance. Week four, and he won't, is underway with the Bucs and Panthers from Tampa Bay as that's through the end zone. Touchback 20-yard line. And Jameis Winston from Florida State, three straight games of at least 200 passing yards and a touchdown. Jameis has been not great with his completion percentage. But that yards per completion, tops in the league. He's not scared to make the tough throws, and we'll see a lot of that today, I think, Chris. Led the Bucs to a win over New Ready. Orleans at New Orleans. Blue Blue that? A loss at home to Houston last week and on the uh, home against Tennessee to start the season as Doug Martin carries on first down for the Buccaneers. He and Charlie Sims will carry the workload on the ground. Vincent Jackson and Mike Evans, the receivers, Austin Safarian Jenkins, and Luke Stocker out at tight end with injury and active. So Brandon Myers in that spot. Joe Howley continues to play at center. Evan Smith inactive with an ankle injury on the Bucks O line. Ready. Blue ready. Up. Ball is botched on the snap, and the Panthers were quick to get to it. Let's see the official signal, and they have it. Carolina with an early takeaway on the second snap of the game. Well, Lovey Smith told us yesterday, or Friday in his mid-meeting with them that this his team has not gotten off to a fast start at all this year. Mistakes like this just don't help. The center quarterback exchange, most fundamental part of football, and they don't get it done. I know it's a new center, but this sets up Carolina the early red zone opportunity. And a wet football, Star Latulale came up with the recovery. There's Joe Howley, the backup center, who just joined this team from the Atlanta Falcons when they had the injury to Evan Smith a few weeks ago. And the rain has picked up. It's coming down a little bit harder as the Panthers take over at the 21 of Tampa Bay. See Cam stumbling, but handing to Jonathan Stewart, who's going to have a first down and goal inside the 10-yard line of the Buccaneers. Run defense was a problem last week with Tampa Bay at Houston. You know, they're last in the league defending the run. It's a gap control type defense, but they have yet to get on track in that regard all season. Jonathan Stewart just went over 5,000 career yards. He was injured late in the win last week. And Stewart, excuse me, Tolbert handles that football. And again, the rain picking up since the opening kickoff. Early red zone opportunity for Carolina. You're on the road. The weather is not going to be good today. These showers will be on and off all day, they tell us. They can get a quick score here. It's going to be sloppy. Gives them a much better chance to succeed here early in this football game. The Buccaneers' defense has been awful in the red zone, defending or keeping teams out of the end zone. Cam Newton is running with the football. We run out of bounds. A loss back beyond the 15. They get an opportunity here uh, on third down to, to improve on that percentage. They give up nearly 90% scores in the red zone, and that's just unacceptable if you're going to be a winning team. 
came in as the worst in the NFL percentage-wise, but they did the job on Cam Newton. Yeah, watch Jack, Jack Smith in the middle get penetration there and force that ball to bounce outside. He's not typically someone that factors in the run game. He's more of a one-dimensional edge rusher, but he did a great job there. Third and goal. He removed his visor, probably got wet for better visibility here. Underneath, he dumps the pass to Greg Olson. And he's knocked down short of the five, so it'll be fourth down. Good job by Tampa Bay's defense here. You get a sudden change situation. Turnover, close to your red zone. Get a big stop on second down, and we're able to keep Carolina out of the end zone. Something that Luffy Smith will come to the sideline and congratulate his guys about. Graham Gano comes on to try the field goal of 24 yards. Remember, snap, hold, all have to be smooth. He's had a couple block this year. Nortman, the punter, is the holder. And he knuckleballs that through. The damp football gives Carolina off to a 3-0 start and a 3-0 lead against their NFC South division rival, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Moments ago, Cam Newton, after the rain showers fell, removing the visor. Carolina settles for three. Now the rain has stopped. It's going to be that kind of afternoon here in the Tampa St. Pete area. Panthers, looks like he didn't just take it off. Looked like he destroyed that. <laughs> destroyed he that. needed it off before the next play. <laughs> He's in game mode as Cano <laughs> kicks off for the second time in a matter of minutes and a chance to return for Bobby Rainey. And Bobby Rainey with one of the best returns for this team in a while. Helmets are falling off, and he's all the way out before Graham Gano made the tackle short of the 38-yard line. A 38-yard return. You get these squib kicks sometimes. You get an opportunity for a big return, and Bobby Rainey finds a crease there. It's sloppy out there. Guys falling around all over the place. They set him up with a pretty good starting position. Averaging 30 a return. Sets up the Bucks offense as they trail but have the football. Jared Allen, new member of the Panthers, picked up this week from Chicago. Longtime Viking in chief. Doug Martin is brought down right away. After the sixth giveaway or turnover by this Tampa Bay offense, Carolina gets three, but that's it as we check the Panther defense. Tony Ely moved over. They've released Wes Horton early today, and Luke Keekley out, remains out on the concussion protocol. Back watching, did not make the trip with the team. Josh Norman, three takeaways Ready. this year. Ready. And a big one to save their victory last week. The pitch to Doug Martin. And he's brought down at the 40 by Thomas Davis, who leads the team in tackles. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee for a game break. Kurt? One game already a final, the one that was played in London today. And the Jets roll past Miami. Eric Decker with a 10-yard score. They won 27-14. Jets now 3-1. Dolphins 1-3. Chris Ronde? Thank you, Kurt, and the Dolphins pathetic early. Really disappointing with all the optimism there as the Bucks face a third and eight. Winston throws, and it's intercepted. It's Josh Norman. He's going to have his second pick six of the season. Well, you talk about turnovers and takeaways you start the game you have two of them immediately and this is just a bad decision by Jameis Winston Josh Norman is sitting in the flat I think he believed he was in three deep and he couldn't have got an easier catch here for a touchdown now there is a flag down it came late Gene Steratar is our referee the touchdown is good Following the touchdown, we have unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 24, 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. We will now attempt the try. Yeah, he has been talked to about the last week and now has the Panthers with the touchdown return. And here's the excessive celebration. Hey, kid's balling right now. It's hard to, you had an interesting hard to disagree with him. Chat with him and Godot's extra point. 
is good. It's 10 to nothing. And if we go back to the season opener against Jacksonville. And these picks look almost similar. We did this game. He's sitting in the flat. Mistake by the quarterback. Harbor Chris Myers and Josh Norman after the interception return for a touchdown. He says when you go onto the field, you have to have a dog mentality. You know what? He has a dog mentality, too, because of where he was drafted. I talked to him yesterday. He talks about how he plays with his hands, his feet, especially his eyes. And the guy is greedy. I, I, I call him greedy. He's got greedy eyes in the backfield, but he does a great job taking the ball away. So they kick off from the 20 after the penalty. Bobby Rainey, who had a 38-yard return moments ago and set the Bucks up in excellent field position, is going to do it again near the same part of the field. Trey Boston on the special teams tackle. October beats baseball. FS1, your home for postseason action with the American League Division and Championship Series. There'll be a lot of drama. Make yourself part of the history. It begins Thursday on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. So the rookie Jameis Winston, five snaps in this game, two turnovers, a botched exchange between himself and the center, Joe Howley, and then the pick six. And the crowd quiet, damp, and I'm guessing annoyed. Ready! Blue lady! Blue lady hot! Winston to throw, and right on target is Vincent Jackson! All the way inside the 40 of Carolina. They won't be annoyed with that. You know, I thought Josh Norman would spend his day tracking Mike Evans, but he's just staying on the left side of the field. He ends up on Vincent Jackson, who wasn't targeted enough last week, to be honest with you, Chris. But he has some cushion there. He gets a nice delivery from his quarterback. They pick up a much-needed first down. Only two catches last week. Mike Evans was targeted 15 times. This team suffered nine drops last week in the loss to Houston. That's the Buccaneers official count after reviewing the film. Ready. Blue ready. Blue's up. After a gain of 23, Winston with time and flags all over the place. One at the 30, one at the 40. Again, Gene Sterator, our referee, one of the more respected officiating crews and one of the more respected referees in the league. There are fouls by both teams on the play. Illegal formation offense number 78 was on the end of the line of scrimmage uncovered. Also prior to the pass holding, defense number 32. Those penalties offset. Replay first down. Correction, the number was 31 on the defensive hold. That clears that up, so it's first and ten. And before the game, Cam Newton was making sure to say hi to the referee. I'm sure he's saying to Gene Steratore, you're not too old to ref. At 52, I think you'll do a fine job. 35. Blue lady. Blaze up. Doug Martin has to fight for some extra yards. I think it's important here, Chris, for the, this Tampa Bay offense to put some points on the board early. You start off and struggle. You fumble the second snap of the game. First pass Jameis Winston throws is the interception for a touchdown. He has to build some confidence. Dirk Cutter has come out. He's tried to run the football. See if he can get this team down into the red zone. They get some points. Cutter, the former offensive coordinator in Atlanta most recently. The undefeated Ready. Falcons leading Houston at home, by the Ready. way. 7 to nothing in the opening quarter. Doug Martin squirts through the hole and gets near the first down. Marker at the 30-yard line. Again, it's Thomas Davis on the tackle who had that pectoral injury late in the game last weekend. It is good enough for a first down. And if they get the run game going, it makes all the difference in the world. There's a lot of problems on this Tampa Bay team that they're figuring out, but Doug Martin is not one of them. He's had a great start to his season. His that yards per carry is a little misleading. But the guy, when you need positive yards, he's the one that's getting them. In the game they won, he had a season-high 78 yards on 21 carries in New Orleans. Martin again, rain falling again. He stays on his feet inside the 25-yard line. And again, this offensive line, we talked about how he's stepping in at center for Evan Smith. Two rookies there, the... Second round draft choice is a Donovan Smith and Ali Marpet. You got the rookie right here. You got the rookie on the other side of the ball. 
but he gets some good blocking up front. And this this offensive line has been maligned a little bit, Chris. They've taken some heat, but they did a great job in pass protection last week against the tough Houston front. They're getting off to a good start running the football here today. Doug Martin knocked down inside the 25. It'll bring up third and about four. Ely and Shaq Thompson on the tackle. Carolina, despite missing Luke Keekley, he was injured in the opener, not having Frank Alexander from the start of the season. Charles Johnson went on the injured reserve. They hope to have him back in eight weeks. And again, they added Jaron Allen. But the defense, in some close games, has kept the Panthers undefeated. Need to get to the 20 for a first down. Floating it towards Josh Norman, and it's tipped away. Mike Evans was the receiver over there. I don't know if I'd test him again. <laughs> yeah, I'd avoid that side of the field. Yeah, this kid, it, all of you have seen the, the interception he had last week against New Orleans. I mean, look at the how high this guy gets off the field. He's playing good at football at the cornerback position of anybody in the league right now. He needs to find another target, I think. The next adventure. Kyle Brinza as they line up for a field goal in the rain. Now he made a 58-yarder last week, but he missed three other field goals and an extra point. One of those a 57-yarder. In warm-ups, he was seven out of eight and hit from 54. This one is up and through. And one of the people defending him last week was his quarterback, Jameis Winston. So the Bucs are on the board, trailing 10-3, but Josh Norman has been a one-man defense for Carolina so far. Here in Tampa Bay, the rain picking up once again. It's been off and on throughout the start of the day and this game. Bucks kicking off after settling for a field goal. Kyle Brinza. Fozzie Whitaker is deep in the end zone waving everybody away and coming out to the 20-yard line cam newton and the carolina offense let's head down to the field and jennifer hale well chris this certainly does seem to be a breakout season for josh norman i asked him before the game what's the difference this season versus the other ones and he said really it was off-season prep he decided to out train his talent level and now chris he says he is having the time of his life he loves being out on the field my goodness does it ever show chris Cam Newton off to the best three-game start in his professional career. He has never been 3-0 individually. The Panther team has, leading this Carolina group from the 20-yard line. It is Jonathan Stewart, and he will fight to get something out of nothing. Going back to Josh Norman, his college football at Coastal Carolina. He's from Greenwood, South Carolina. Greenwood High, the Eagles. D.J. Swearinger, the Buccaneers, played on that same high school team. Second down, eight. Stewart remains the back. It'll be third down. Let's check in on the Falcons with Houston with Kurt Menefee. Kurt? Uh, Chris Rondé and Jack. All right, thank you, Kurt. The Giants also with a 3-0 lead on Buffalo. Washington leads the Eagles 3-0, and here it's 10-3 Carolina on third and five. We know his big matchup is Greg Olson. Bradley McDougal is covered in man-to-man -man at the bottom of the screen. Cam Newton, here comes a flag. He's going to keep and fall down short of the first down. Quad Alexander, the LSU rookie fourth rounder, tracked him down. I think this is going to be a hold on Trey Turner there in the interior offensive line. The Bucks got to make a decision if they push him back and give him third or long. Let go use of hands. Hands to the face. Defense. Oh. Number 56. Oh. Five-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic. First down. All right, a major penalty here. That's on Jaquise Smith. 
And the Bucks with 33 penalties coming into this game, tied for most in the league with the Raiders. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a hold there on Gerald McCoy as he goes to the ground there, Trey Turner. But, yes, you can clearly see that Jack Smith had his hand up in the face mask of Mike Rimmers, and that is the call that Gene Steratore gave us. So it's a first down instead of fourth down. Just inside the 35, Jonathan Stewart. It's up to about the 37-yard line before running into the Buccaneers. Will Goldston started at defensive end in place of George Johnson today. There's been some upheaval somewhat on this on this Bucks defense in general. We know that Alteron Werner, who's been a starting quarterback since he got here last year, is on the bench now for Tim Jennings. Will Goldston, who's had a pretty good start to his season, takes over for George Johnson as well, just trying to get more production up front for this defense. Cam Newton to throw and floats one for Greg Olson. He's got a first down. Inside the 43 of Tampa Bay coming off a personal receiving yardage record and the win last week. We know this is going to be a matchup all day. The Bucs have been playing a lot of man coverage of late. Bradley McDougal, they believe he could do it, but if you've seen Greg Olson work this year, he relishes these situations, and Camp Newton knows that his, his big tight end can win most of those matchups. A gain of 19, and the impressive numbers against Tampa Bay as well. He has beaten up the Bucs regardless of who the quarterback has been. Got the timeout. And the Panthers call it. The box with a trailing score of 10 to 3. Cam Newton in his 66th NFL start. 122 touchdowns, passing and running. Incredible numbers. For Cam Newton, who's throwing on first down. Brenton Person is brought down right away by Chris Conti. Jericho Cotri remains inactive with an ankle injury and Kevin Norwood has yet to play a role as well, but a good defensive play from the former Bear. Yeah, great defensive play there. The Bucks have been blitzing a lot over the past couple of weeks and it's put their safeties a little bit on an island to cover defensive or cover wide receivers and Chris Conti just burst out of the middle of the field here. It makes a great tackle for loss. A loss of three. Burson can play all three receiver positions from Charlotte, North Carolina, and Wofford College, a popular player in the area. Jonathan Stewart on a delayed handoff. Fights to get all the way down to the 38 of Tampa Bay. It'll bring up third down, but a strong run by Jonathan Stewart. Now this defense for Tampa Bay, Lovey Smith has taken over this season calling the defense Leslie Frazier his defensive coordinator. He has, and he wanted some ownership over this defense. It's what he was known for, and so he decided that if they're going to win or lose, they're going to do it on him. Well, it hasn't necessarily been the, call, the play calling that's hurt them. What's hurt them is the missed tackles. There was a bunch of missed tackles on that play to get a seven-yard gain and make this a third and manageable for the Carolina Panthers. They need five. Mike Tolbert is in the backfield with Cam Newton. Everybody loaded to the left of Cam set the play as clock. they keep the football Thank dry. You. And Gene Steratore wants the play clock reset, something Cam Newton, when he gets to every stadium, keeps a close eye on where that is. In motion is Philly Brown. Cam Newton from the pocket. His floating pit for Olsen. Just off his fingertips, and it's going to be fourth down. Tim Jennings over there, part of the coverage, along with Mike Jenkins. You know, they get man-to-man -man coverage here. Bradley McDougal again, man-to-man -man against Greg Olson. He just can't keep up with this guy. He's such, he has such subtleties at the top of his route to create space. Cam Newton takes his time to find him. This was an opportunity for a big play, just, just out the room. Ron Rivera passes up. A 56-yard field goal attempt, or the idea of going for it. He's had a history of that. As Norman plays the field position game, and this one gets away into the end zone. So a win for the Bucks as they take over at the 20-yard line. Well, because of the injuries on the defensive line, that Carolina defense traded a sixth-round conditional pick for Jared Allen this week, a five-time Pro Bowler, and leads all active players in quarterback sacks. It was in a different kind of defense in Chicago, but Ron Rivera said, hey, Charles Tillman told me about him, and he said he got a text from Brian Urlacher saying he's a good fit 
in the locker room. Well, he wasn't a fit in that scheme, and it's been much talked about how Chicago went to a 3-4 scheme with Vic Fangio. He's definitely a four down, put my hand in the ground player. He told us yesterday when we talked to him that he feels comfortable. Even though this is a three days in the building, he feels comfortable to know that he can get in here and get after a quarterback going back to his natural Ready. stance. Ready. Charles Sims in at running back. And he gets the carry. And he gets up across the 25-yard line. Had a touchdown catch last week. He's got a game break. Check it again with Kurt Benefit. All right, another unbeaten team trying to keep it going. Cincinnati. Jill Bernard helps that 13 yards on the touchdown run. Right now they're up 14-3 towards the end of the first quarter. Trying to go to 4 0. This Ronde Jen. And now Bobby Rainey comes in. Thank you, Kurt. Three different running backs used so far with Doug Martin carrying Malote. Seven carries already. The pass over the head of Charles Sims. And that'll bring up third down. He came in with four touchdown passes and three interceptions. Of course, suffered the pick to Josh Norman that was returned for a touchdown, completing just 52% of his passes this year. Set in the open, and he's, he's shown some development, but it's the little things that he needs to do better. And he'll learn as he, as he goes on in this, in this year. He'll find a way to get better at all these little things, but finding completions has to be paramount. On third and four, <laughs> Winston. Is going to do what he usually doesn't do and run for the first down. Spinning around. He was, <laughs> he was trying to get out of bounds. He does have a touchdown run this year, but that's not his strength. Well, no one's ever going to confuse Jameis Winston with Cam Newton. But one thing that he has done fairly well this year is work in the pocket. He had a completion underneath here, but he's looking the other way. But he sees that the lane is there, and there's no reason for him to force anything. Takes a couple of steps up and gets the sure first down. After a gain of seven. Ready. Mike Evans in motion. Winston from the pocket gets out of it. There's no whistle. And now he gets rid of it. But did he get it far enough? As Mario Addison and Shaq Thompson were harassing him. They're hoping for, looks like they're arguing for an intentional grounding here. And the flag is down. I was surprised on the first wrap-up that it wasn't called a sack, but he got out of it. Well, he didn't get this ball back to the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be a spot foul. Intentional, intentional grounding. Ground. Offense, number three, although the quarterback was out of the pocket, the pass did not get back to the original line of scrimmage. It's a loss of down on the spot foul. Second down. He had time here after... Gosder Terrell has helped him up. He just, he just got to be able to get this ball to Vincent Jackson. Down the middle of the field, watch how wide open Vincent Jackson is. Kirk Coleman is out of position, rallying to that. That would have been a huge play, maybe even a touchdown for this offense. On second of 23, Charles Sims with some tough yards up across the 27. It will bring a third down. They need to get all the way up to the 43-yard line to get a first down. This offense continues to shoot itself in the, in the foot. You know, you watch film, they're always off schedule on third down. Sitting now at third and 16, it's, I mean, rookie quarterback, you don't want to continue to put him in these situations. Hey, Mike Bidet, Mike Bidet, Mike Bidet. Sunday, Sunday. On third and 16, the screen to Charles Sims. It'll be well short. It'll be fourth down. Trey Boston coming up to make the tackle as the opening quarter is winding down. Jameis Winston, who called last week promising, even though it was a loss to Houston. And Lovey Smith said, we're improving, even though the record may not show it. In fact, Lovey Smith said, this game, this is big. There's a lot at stake, even for this early in the season. And the end of the first quarter has Lovey Smith's team behind as the undefeated Panthers lead the one and two bucks by the score of 10 to three here in Tampa Bay. Fox NFL Sunday back after a word from your local Fox station.
Rondé Barber, Chris Myers, and we're glad you're watching the NFL on Fox. Game four here in Tampa Bay, and Jacob Shum ready to punt. Ted Ginn Jr. averaging 13 yards a return back for Carolina. Waving for the fair catch. And it bounces out of bounds. Well, it's a 10-3 score, but in that opening quarter, Tampa Bay with already two turnovers, two giveaways. Josh Norman once again terrific. So if you're the Buccaneers fighting to go to 2-0 and in your division against the leader, this is the kind of game, Ronnie, that Carolina has played close, but it has victory for them written all over well, it. They haven't blown anybody out of the water all year, but they have been sound. They've been smart with the football. I mean, Cam's two interceptions this year have not been his fault. They've just stayed close. The defense refuses to give up points. They're doing that again today. I, I, it's, it's hard to find a way to beat Carolina at this, at this juncture, especially if you're Tampa Bay and you're giving the ball away. The off and on rain continues. Newton's pass is tipped and incomplete. Let's get a game break from Mike Hill. All right, guys, Falcons trying to stay undefeated today. Back to you. And the Falcons don't play the Panthers until the last month of the season in December. They meet two times in three weeks. Will Goldston is the Buccaneer who deflected the pass of Cam Newton at second and ten. Cam Newton fakes. And middle of the field, no. Philly Brown running across the middle. And Chris Conte was running with him. There's a flag down. Well, they're going to call illegal contact here. And, and to be honest with you, I, I don't see how they call this. He got there on time with the football. And it was really a great play by Chris Conte. Well, if they huddle and discuss it, Gene Steratoy might say, pick up the flag if it's not clear. This is not a reviewable play, obviously, but we can show you the replay. So, Rondé, you get a bird's eye view having played in the secondary. Yeah, just check, take a look at the end of the play and Chris Conti. Simultaneous contact. He doesn't affect the body of the receiver. After discussion, there is no foul for pass interference. Really is an incomplete pass. So done. You know, the, you know, the pressure on Cam forced him to throw this ball late, but Philly Brown was wide open, and really, that's textbook. He doesn't pull the jersey of the receiver, gets his hand across the body, and Conti, you look at his reaction. He's like, are you kidding me? I couldn't have done it any better. My coach told me that's how you do it. And then he looking at the flag, but they correctly picked up that, that penalty. One of four former Bears Lovey Smith has on this Buccaneer defense. On third down and ten, pressure coming. Cam Newton working, sideline, gets rid of it, and just survives its fourth down. It was Jack Smith with four sacks coming into the game, chasing Cam Newton. Watch Jack Smith, he's at the top of your screen right here. Got a Philly, Philly Fozzie Whitaker out there, and nobody accounts for him. Cam Newton is so athletic that he's able to get, a, get away from this, but this could have been an easy sack for the Buccaneers. Cam Newton is a special player, man. I mean, he was hardly looking at him and avoided him. He's been doing that all year long, man. Brad Nortman standing at his 10-yard line. Bobby Rainey to receive the punt, and it's a good one. Driving Rainey toward the sideline, and he shoved out of bounds right away. A well-timed Colin Jones push out from the punt by Nortman. Carolina with a 10-3 lead. It's fall-like weather for Florida. The breeze kicking up the rain off and on. And for the two turnovers by Tampa Bay, fortunate to be only down by seven points as they take over at their own 19-yard line. Javorski Lane splits out as a receiver. Bottom of your screen. Jameis Winston to throw. And it's intercepted. Loaded into the hands of Kurt Coleman. It looked like it was tipped, though, when it left the line of scrimmage. There's a flag down as well. Again, it came after the interception. Well, this is going to be a post-play penalty. The interception will stand, and then 
Ball was definitely tipped at the line of scrimmage. I believe it was K1 short. 99 in the middle of your screen and tips and overthrows. You talk about them all the time if you're on defense. The ruling on the field was interception after the player was ruled down by contact. Personal foul late hit, intercepting team number 54. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, Carolina. K1 short will be on the left side of your screen and it's ball floating up. Tips and overthrows if you're in the secondary. You love these. You hardly have to work for them. It's the third takeaway by this Carolina defense to start this football game. And the second on sportsmanlike conduct penalty. You know, Ron Rivera for the Panthers in this game said we have to cut back on the penalties. They're, they're ranked in the middle of the pack across the NFL. The league average 23. We said that the Buccaneers have been the most penalized team along with the Raiders coming in. And already three mistakes by Tampa Bay's offense. But the Panthers moved back after the penalty to the 45 of the box. Jonathan Stewart carries. For the Panthers, that's now nine takeaways, including those today. Carolina offense hasn't done a whole lot. The only touchdown, the Josh Norman interception return for a touchdown. After a loss of one, pressure on Cam Newton, and he gets away. Chris Conti was blitzing in, the catch made. And falling at the 35 is Ed Dixon, the backup to Greg Olson. And Cam Newton doing what he does best. Well, Cam's laughing at these blitzers that are coming up free to him because he's just a better athlete than these guys. I know Chris Conti is free here, just like Jack Smith was free on the last pressure. Just a little sidestep. And this is where Cam has developed as a passer. He's not always looking to run with the football. His eyes are downfield, and he finds Dixon coming open late for a big gain there on first down. After a gain of 12, it's a first down at the 35. Newton's pass for Ted Ginn, and he couldn't hold on. It was delivered right there. Yeah, this was a good throw. Good coverage, though. It's in a tight window. Ted Ginn gets his hands on it, and he's had his troubles early in the year catching the football, but he's also contributed some big plays. Saw a couple of them last week against New Orleans. You know, his 18.8 yards per reception lead this football team. He had 93 receiving yards last week, the most he had since 2009 in a game. Fozzie Whitaker in it running back. Cam Newton running right. Cam Newton with another first down. He leads all quarterbacks this season in rushing yards and rushing attempts. Well, for Tampa Bay's defense, you got to know, when they clean out the backfield, have four eligible receivers to one side of the field, that this is going to be some sort of quarterback keep. They recognize, He recognized that Tampa Bay was in man-to-man -man defense, saw the linebacker move outside with him, and it gave him a huge lane to pick up some yardage there. He's second on the team in rushing. Mike Tolbert in the backfield. Along with Greg Olson. Pass middle of the field open. Catch made. Brenton Burson with a first and goal for the Panthers. Just impressive. We saw it last week. The kind of rhythm that this offense can get in when Cam is delivering good passes. You know, he stands tall in the pocket here, and Britton Burson's coming open late and over the hands of a leaping Jack Smith. They're just impressive. I, I can't say enough about how Cam has played the last two weeks. After Stewart carries, Cam Newton is 5 out of 10 so far, has not made a mistake, and he's run the ball three different times. But three turnovers have been the story of this game on second and goal from the six. Well, as impressive as this 3-0 start has been, Carolina has had a tendency to keep football teams in games. You know, they play close to their competition. They get a touchdown here, though. they got to feel real good about how they're playing on the road at Tampa Bay. Greg Olson, bottom of your screen. Cam Newton 
for Greg Olson and overthrows him. The coverage was very good over there by Bradley McDougal. It'll be third and goal. Tampa Bay is showing their hand every single time they split out Greg Olson and Bradley McDougal, number 30, goes out there and lines up on him one-on-one. -on -one. They know it's man-to-man. -man. He's their best matchup, Greg Olson is, and he's thrown at him now four times in this, in this situation. Really good job here by Bradley McDougal staying in, siding in front of him, and the ball is overhead, it's uncatchable for Greg Olson. Newton, end zone, catch made, touchdown, Ted Ginn. Now he's waving it off. Did he juggle it? The arms went up. Well, he did not juggle it, and they're gonna, he should challenge this, because he, this is a touchdown. The field is an incomplete pass. The second foot landed out of bounds as a ruling on the field. Fourth Left down. foot inbounds, right foot dragging there on the goal line. It's a clean catch. This is going to be a touchdown, Chris. There's the official ruling it a touchdown, but then they reversed it on the field to incomplete. So now we need a challenge flag coming from Ron Rivera, and he threw it. And I give it to this official. This back judge probably didn't see that right foot dragging. Carolina is challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. Timeout. Well, initially, the sign for touchdown, then overruled incomplete. So Ron Rivera challenges on the touchdown catch, no catch from Ted Ginn. Gene Steratour has taken a closer look. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. The receiver did have possession of the football and taps his left foot, getting two feet in. The result is a touchdown. Carolina will not be charged with the timeout. We're Rondé, you were quick to call it a touchdown. Our rules analyst, Mike Pereira, watching as well. Mike? Yeah, and I, I think Ed Walker, the head linesman, had it all the way. You had the side judge come in to overrule him. And, you know, the goal is to communicate and try to get it right. And so the side judge imparted the, uh, the advice to head linesman, uh, Ed Walker, who's a new guy, but his call originally was right. The extra point is good. Thank you, Mike Pereira. And Ron Rivera now three out of five in challenges this year. And it's a 14-point Panther lead. Tomorrow, there's a showdown brewing. And it has Gotham on edge. If you think you know what's happening next, think again. The new season is here. Gotham, rise of the villains. Catch an all-new episode tomorrow night right here on Fox. Well, a major moment there for that third down call because if it if the Bucks keep them out of the end zone, it's a different kind of game given the ineptness so far of this Tampa Bay offense. Well, I think you, you say it right. I mean, three turnovers, just general sloppy play on the offensive side of ball, ball for Tampa Bay. And Carolina hasn't had to do much to get these 17 points. Josh Norman scored a touchdown early in the game on an interception. We've seen a fumbled snap from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that led to a field goal, and the interception on this last possession leads to another seven points for Carolina. All 17 points for the Panthers coming off turnovers. And there's a reason Carolina's 3-0 and the Bucs are 1-2. So back on offense from the 20-yard line. Special day here in Tampa at halftime. A teammate of yours, Rondé, former Buccaneer great Mike Alstad put into the Tampa Bay Buccaneer Ring of Honor. Yeah, an outstanding football player. Harking back to the old days watching this film here with Mike Alstad. We had some great players on this football team, but he was the catalyst, the one catalyst that we had on offense. It'll be special at halftime to watch him get his name risen up there with the Bucs all those greats. Now they're ready to unveil Mike Alstad's name. A lot of his former teammates are here in attendance and will be part of the ceremony. Ready! Meanwhile, back to today's Bucks. Blaze up! Doug Martin. Some extra effort there. Gets about across the 27-yard line. Well, if you're Tampa Bay, there's no reason to chase this football game now. It's still 10 and, and a half minutes left in the second quarter. It's slow moving because of all these turnovers and incompletions and whatnot. But you're only down 14 points. 
get something positive here working with your rookie quarterback. They're at the line. Tempo, see if they can get something going. Mike Evans, 17 targets last week. Hadn't caught a ball yet. It'll be third down as Martin is shoved backwards. Tony Ely did the work. Mentioned Jared Allen on this defense. Ronde, after five sacks in week one, Carolina's had just one sack in their last two games. They haven't been very productive. They have been stopping the run, though. Coney Ely, you cannot run the football at him. He hasn't got affected the pocket in terms of quarterback pressures, but when you try to run directly at him, the guy has been a monster so far this year. After a loss of two, it's third down and five. Hey, 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 Sunday. Jameis Winston to Vincent Jackson showing some good hands even though the coverage was excellent by Josh Norman it's a first down and we, I think we're uh, identifying who Carolina is deeming the biggest threat here on the Buccaneers offense Josh Norman the clear number one corner on this football team has been around Vincent Jackson the entire day we'll have to keep an eye on this matchup Where do we go? Doug Martin right ahead talk about needing an, an important running game but it, it's a little bit predictable here a lot of these first down runs with Doug Martin and they're just not getting enough yardage to take the heat off the rookie quarterback we always talk about needing to stay on schedule in your offense you know you go back to that Houston game and they were 2 and 12 on third down it was because they couldn't get anything positive on first and second down it's such a simple formula to talk about up here but when the offensive line isn't getting good pressure or push up front, they struggle. Ten carries, only 26 yards. This pass is hauled in by Lewis Murphy. At the 42-yard line. Well, we know this kid has great arm talent, and this is an outstanding throw and catch here. Tight coverage on Lewis Murphy. And he puts it in the only, uh, only spot that he can catch this. And they're just a yard short of the first down. Murphy, a local guy from Lakewood High in St. Pete and a Florida Gator. Big Ready. win for the Gators Ready. yesterday. Ready. Doug Martin fights, and it's going to be close on third and a yard. Looks like, well, we'll see where they spot it. Remember that line? It's not official, but the we are told that the officials do use the line sometimes as a reference point, and that shows he got the first down. Yeah, good little second effort there by Doug Martin after the initial contact to get a first down and keep this drive going. Got to feel positive if you're Tampa Bay right now. Jameis Winston's made a couple of nice throws. The running game is not really establishing itself. See if they continue with it here. Here's a throw attempt on first down and a little dump to Doug Martin, who gets a block. Does some dancing. Is tracked down around the 46 of Carolina. Carolina decided to bring pressure here. And <laughs> watch this little pirouette that Doug Martin gives Colin Cole, the blitzer here. See him at the top of your screen right here, sorry. And just slip him, let the blitz come in, throw the screen right behind him, and a nice pickup on first down. Mark 56, Mark 56. Charles Sims now in at running back, and he gets the carry. And maybe to the 45. A.J. Klein on the tackle. Let's get another game break and update with Mike Hill. Mike? All right, guys. Falcons, Sean Falcons, 21-0 in the set. All right, thank you, Mike. And end defeated with the Redskins in town next week. Pass is caught by Vincent Jackson. Inside the 25 of Carolina. I said Colin Cole earlier. I meant Colin Jones. He's playing in nickel defense here for Carolina today but Vincent Jackson is having himself a big day only two catches last week but Jameis Winston look at the eyes there looking off the defense knowing he's coming back to his big veteran wide receiver and just a sharp throw behind Shaq Thompson who takes that underneath coverage opens up a big hole for a completion this one to Lewis Murphy the block is missed but he gets around and run out of bounds after that 20-yard pickup Jameis Winston to Vincent Jackson and you did mention Colin Jones, he is active on the field, and Colin Cole was released by the team earlier this week. I got caught up reading There's press releases <laughs> earlier. It's a lot of Collins. Col Collins. I think Collins are in this league. Don't forget Colin Cowherd on the NFL pregame show. Charles Sims carries. And an impressive drive for this Tampa Bay offense. They got the tempo going in this offense. Jameis 
even in the preseason, we saw him much more comfortable when he's calling plays at the line of scrimmage. And I don't know if it's a rhythm thing for him, but he takes him to the huddle, not necessarily as effective early in this game. I like the change up by Dirk Cutter to give themselves an opportunity to play a little faster. And on third and one, Vincent Jackson being shadowed. You can see that Josh Norman is, well, he was going where Vincent Jackson was. Now they move him to the right side. Winston can run for the first instead, completes. Inside the five is Vincent Jackson. Looks like the ball may have come out, but he held on to it. And it's a first and goal, Buccaneers. Great blitz pickup here on this. Watch this guy get upended right here by Doug Martin. It gives Jameis Winston time, patience to find his open Martin receiver, Martin Vincent Martin. Jackson. Get it set up inside the five yard line. Blue ready. Blue's up. Doug Martin. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Love the energy that this offense showed on that drive. They were stagnant would be a bad word to describe what it was before but this one had tempo it had pace had completions had commitment to the running game and then you get it in the red zone and good teams run it down here turn around hand it to doug martin quick feet and running through tackles and they cut this lead to seven points here kyle brinza the rookie from notre dame acquired from the lions in the preseason missed an extra point last week left some points out there and this will cut it to seven. An impressive drive by Jameis Winston. Doug Martin finishing it off. 80 yards. And it's now a seven point Panther lead. The NFL and the American Cancer Society encourage everyone to join the fight against breast cancer. You can learn more about a crucial catch day on October 13th at NFL.com slash pink. And you'll see a lot of pink players wearing it throughout the month of October as Fozzie Whitaker is back to receive the kick of Kyle Brinza who has a field goal and an extra point. And it's now a 10-7 game. Jameis Winston, six out of six on that drive. And it's a 17-10, correction, 17-10 Carolina lead over the box. And again, Winston Sharp and Vincent Jackson with three catches in that drive for 39 yards. The offense of Tampa Bay has come to life here. It'll be a touchback, waving everybody away. 20-yard line, here comes Cam Newton on offense. And after the Winston to Jackson passing, got them close, Doug Martin got the Bucks in. Fence from the fans here in Tampa Bay. Cam Newton and the Carolina offense from the 20 with Stewart at the back. Stewart gets the carry, and you can almost, it gets tough running there as he pushes the defense beyond the 25, and you said at the start of the broadcast, as Levy Smith told you, his A players have to play like A players. Well, this is the point in the game, too, if you're Tampa Bay's defense, you, you've just gotten a score on offense, you need Levante David, you need Gerald McCoy, two guys that we haven't mentioned yet in the broadcast, to come up with a big play and get this football back for your offense so that they can get the momentum that, that they created on that last drive and continue it and see if they can get this game back to where it's closer. That was a seven-yard push for Stewart as he shoved some of the Buccaneer defenders backward. Cam Newton keeps and gets the first down up to the 35-yard line. Gerald McCoy is playing with a shoulder injury, so we know he's not 100%. He's not using it as an excuse. If you're going to play, you're going to play. But in reality, and he has... Since he's been active here in the league since 2012, he is the most sacks of any defensive tackle in the game. But again, his presence somewhat hampered by the shoulder injury. Andrew Norwell, Trey Turner, guys that he's lining up today have had pretty good seasons thus far. Here comes a flag on first down.
False start. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. First down. That call on Mike Remmers, who, as you said, with Trey Turner on that right side, playing so well for Ron Rivera's team. The offensive line, a true upgrade over last year. Anchored by Matt Khalil there in the middle. It's a good, good football player, this guy right here. Helps Cam Newton with the calls. Never, ever see him get beat. Newton is going to go down. It's a sack for Tampa Bay, and there is Gerald McCoy as if you cued him from the booth. I don't got to do much cueing for Gerald McCoy. He is the most dominant three technique in football. You see him right there in the middle of your screen working on Andrew Norwell and Khalil and gets a little bump off the guard in the center, a little game inside. He comes home with his third sack of the season. And nearing the two-minute warning, the penalty backed him up the sack, backs up Carolina even more. Carolina will have two timeouts. Facing a second and long. And we just had a timeout called. Tampa Bay used it to preserve more time, hoping from their point of view they can pin Carolina in here and have field position before the half. The Panthers get the ball to start the second half. Let's take a look here at Cam. He came up limping after this sack, and Gerald McCoy did end up tackling him low. I just don't see anything that would have caused him any distress there in his lower body to keep an eye on that and see if it becomes more of a problem here. That's the sixth time that Cam Newton has been sacked this season. Well, we've talked about it endlessly. His offensive line has done a good job. You know, they brought in Michael Orr in the offseason. Much talked about. He's had a good season. He's given up some pressures. But as a unit, this group has been really, really good. And Cam has been smarter with his decision making. It's helped this unit, this offense in general. On second and 24, bounces the pass incomplete towards Greg Olson. Looked like Cam Newton was feeling the pressure once again. And we have reached the two minute warning. Panthers and Bucks each with two timeouts. Carolina will be facing a third down and 24, but the Panthers do have the lead by seven here in Tampa Bay. There was one second left on the clock. They had reset prior to 2.05. The last play took four seconds. They have reset the clock. No two-minute warning yet. On third and 24, here comes a flag. Pass to Fozzie Whitaker. And he's going to get knocked out at the 31, short of the first down. And sorry for the confusion on the two-minute warning on the clock, but they had some issues here, obviously, with the stadium. The officials also keeping time down on the field and trying to coordinate. Illegal formation. Offense number 73. Penalty is declined to result in the play. Fourth down. This is also the two-minute warning. Well, there we have the official clarification. We have reached the two-minute warning. This time, I promise. Get apps, videos, and more at iTunes.com slash NFL. Buccaneer defense with a stop, and now Carolina punting with Nortman at his own 17-yard line. Bobby Rainey on the fly and has some room and gets out of bounds up at the 45 of Tampa Bay. Bucks with two timeouts. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles, see what's up on the Visa Halftime Report. 
Coming up on the Visa Halftime, the Dolphins have a tough time across the pond in London. The Falcons try to stay perfect against the Texans, and the Raiders go for three in a row. Highlights and more coming up on the Halftime Show, which will be ad-libbed, unlike this promo. <laughs> Yes, we always love that teleprompter when we're in the studio, but you couldn't script for Josh Norman a better start to his season. Already a second pick six, but now Winston on the move. Driving the team 80 yards the last time with a Doug Martin touchdown. Time, he gets rid of it. Charles Sims has a first down. And he's down to the 43 of Carolina, hustling to get back as the clock runs. Jared Allen, we haven't called his name much. Well, he was in coverage on that play. I was expecting that matchup there. Jared Allen versus Donovan Smith. But he was, was a primary linebacker on that dumb dog there. After a gain of 13. Sims carries. You know, this Carolina defense had problems last week with New Orleans when they got in some hurry-up offense. Were able to move down the field. Now, of course, they were able to stop them in the red zone. See if they were able to get a stop here against Tampa Bay right before the half. After a five-yard pickup, time for Winston. And open is Brandon Myers for a first-out catch. Sean McDermott is choosing to be aggressive on this two-minute drive. That's the second blitz in succession that we've seen. And Jameis Winston has done a good job finding a completion against the pressure. Defensive coordinator of Carolina McDermott and Dirk Cutter, the offensive coordinator, calling in plays for Winston, who just he's this in the direction of Vincent Jackson, who has been the go-to guy today. Mike Evans and the Bucks said all week, including Dirk Cutter, we had to work the ball around. Mike Evans had the 17 targets, also had quite a few drops. Some of those on third down last week has not yet caught a pass. Vincent Jackson has four receptions. And Winston is 10 out of 16, over 100 yards. And he suffered a couple of picks and lost the fumble on the exchange from the center. And there is Evans, the outstanding second-year receiver. Sunday, where we go? Time again. And juggled incomplete. It was right on target to Vincent Jackson. And this is a outstanding play again. We can't not, we can't say this guy's name enough. Josh Norman is beat initially on this comeback route by Vincent Jackson. But he's such a long player. Just listed about six foot tall, but watch how he comes back and gets his hand involved in this and causes that incompletion by Vincent Jackson. Should have been a catch, but contested by Josh Norman calls the incompletion. So now it's third down, and we have a timeout Tampa Bay. They will have one remaining. Another drop, this one by the veteran Vincent Jackson, has put Jameis Winston in a tough spot now on third down and 10. If the Bucks don't get the first, you're looking at a 47-yard field goal try. Jared Allen hoping to close in on the rookie quarterback. One timeout remaining for the Bucks. Mike Evans to the bottom of your screen. Vincent Jackson to the top. Jameis Winston on the move. Underthrown and almost intercepted. It's fourth down and there's a flag down. They're going to get another shot at this. I believe this is going to be holding on Charles Tillman against Mike Evans down at the bottom of the screen here. Prior to the pass, holding defense, number 56. Five-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, the number they hollered out was that of A.J. Klein. 23 seconds and one timeout. It gives them a first down and improves their field position should they have to try and settle for three. Just right there on the hash, and watch Charles Sims come out of the backfield here. And just, and I don't know that I would have called that a hold. He's in the line of scrimmage. I think you have that freedom. But it gives the Bucks a first down here, and three downs to try to get into the end zone or better field position for the field goal. Charles Sims splits out as a receiver, and Winston throws. It's caught and then dropped. Vincent Jackson with another drop, but a terrific play by Winston, who was in the grasp of Jared Allen. My goodness. 
this is inadvisable, I think, <laughs> by James Winston. But he sees a running lane and just, I mean, I'm sure his coach on the sideline, Mike Pajakin, the quarterback coach, is not encouraging these types of throws in a two-minute drill when you're in field goal position. But he got away with it there, Chris. And Vincent Jackson could have bailed him out and did not. Hey, Mike, Mike Pajakin, Mike Pajakin. Sixteen seconds. There's Mike Evans. Quickly goes to the ground, and they're going to have to use their last time out with 11 seconds and a third down play. So you have to be careful here, Ronda. You're either going for the end zone or you're kicking the field goal. You don't want to come away if you're the Bucks without any points. You're looking at a sideline completion. If it's not there, it's going to go out of bounds. Or if you're Dirk Cutter, you're telling your Young quarterback, this ball goes into the end zone on a sure completion or out of the end zone. Turnover here absolutely kills you. A sack absolutely kills you. Got to give your, your kicker an opportunity here to kick this field goal if the throw is not there for him. Jared Allen thought he had a sack. Right now you're looking at a 36-yard attempt for a field goal. Brinza has made today from 42 for Lovey Smith. The sun is shining. The Bucs are threatening. Winston, sideline, out of bounds, first down. That's Cameron Brait, backup tight end with Jenkins and Stocker inactive today. And that's a good executed play by Jameis Winston. Give your kicker another seven, eight yards there. Get him in a more favorable position. Just a note, though, from last week, he was in this position three times and missed kicks on three occasions. They need to get points on the board here, make this 17 to 13. And I and to be honest, Chris, the Bucks will probably feel good about going into this halftime only down four after the way their offense turned the ball over in the first half. 29-yard attempt. And he missed it. You can hear the boos, and Lovey Smith can defend his kicker only so long. His kicker told the team last week, hey, it's on me, nothing technical. It won't happen again. Well, this is a makeable kick, an important kick. And he missed it. Well, Kyle Brenz is a guy that always tries to hook his kicks. And last week, it was the exact same thing. All three of his misses started right, stayed right, and didn't turn back into the field goal. And Lovey Smith is, I mean, I know he doesn't get upset very often. He's very mild-mannered. I can't imagine him keeping his cool when he goes into the locker room after Ma that mess. Many of us saw on Thursday night Mike Tomlin of the Steelers, what he went through with a kicker who couldn't deliver. Still, with three turnovers, the Bucs stay within seven of the undefeated Panthers. Carolina gets the ball to start the second half. Let's head to Los Angeles for the Visa Halftime Report. The Buccaneers ready to kick off to Carolina to start the second half. Carolina deferred to open the game. Today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. Mike Allstott put into the Buccaneer ring of honor with some of the greats. But Josh Norman stealing the show in the first half with an interception return for a touchdown. Doug Martin answering for Tampa Bay. That's today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. Along with producer Mike Burks and our director Michael Frank from the booth up here. Rondé Barber, Chris Myers, Jen Hale will hear from her in just a moment. It's starting to rain again. And the Buccaneers, three turnovers in the first quarter by the offense. Yet they're within seven. What do they have to do now as Cam Newton and the offense take the ball to start the second half? Well, we talk about it often with the Lovey Smith coach defense. Takeaways determine the outcomes of football games. They like to get three. Ironically, Carolina already has three in this football game, and, and to us it feels like it should be more in favor of the Panthers right now. But the Bucks have hung in there. They need to get some stops on defense. Obviously, this offense of Carolina has been patient. They haven't taken any shots down the field yet. The Bucks are going to have to defend when Cam Newton tries to get the ball deep to Ted Ginn sometime in this second half. And you said it at the start of the broadcast, the 3-0 record, Cam Newton, whatever he's had to do for the team so far he has 
Meanwhile, the rookie Jameis Winston, who came in with at least 200 passing yards and a touchdown in each of his first three games, has been playing from behind from the start. And that stat line is pretty typical of what Jameis has been all year. The completion percentage isn't particularly high, but the numbers have been there. But this guy right here, Josh Norman, had a great start to this game with the interception for a TD. He's been shadowing Vincent Jackson all day. He's done a fairly decent job at it. He's a playmaker. We'll see a lot more of him in the second half. And again, the rain that's been off and on picking up here from the 20-yard line. Here comes Cam Newton and the offense. And we saw inducted into the Buccaneers ring of honor, the A-train, a fan favorite, his 11-year career with the Buccaneers. Part of that Super Bowl team, Rondé, that you shared and the embrace uh, touching his comments. Very grateful, a man of few words, but came up big when he had he, to. He doesn't like to talk a lot, but <laughs> I, I love that man more than anybody I play with. Maybe John Lynch and one of my colleagues in Fox now, but Mike Allstott was the quintessential Buccaneer. He defined what our great teams were all about, the way he played. I love watching him play. I love him as a man today, and I'm proud as anything that he's in the ring of honor here in Tampa. Ball is fumbled on the handoff. It's out there for somebody. The Buccaneers are on it. Tim Jennings with the takeaway. Well, I apologize for waxing poetic there, but this game starts in the second half much like it did in the first half, except it's against Carolina now. This is just a, an exchange problem because of the wet football. Cam Newton was trying to get that to Jonathan Stewart and Tim Jennings. Talked about falls on that fumble, but Tim Jenny, or, but Tampa Bay talked about turnovers, needed to get one, and they start the second half with a great opportunity to get some points on the board. Jennings had to be helped over on the sideline, but the football is slick. I'm sure, Ron Rivera is going to remind his team about that. So first takeaway by Tampa Bay, first mistake by the Panthers with the football. And after a missed 29-yard field goal right before the half by Kyle Brinza of the Bucks. It sets them up nicely at the 25 of Carolina. Adam Humphreys has come into the game. Free agent rookie from Clemson. Hand off Doug Martin. And if you're the Bucks here, as Coney Ely makes the stop, you have to think about how confident your kicker is when you're making decisions down here. Let's check in with Jennifer down on the field. Well, Chris, the wind and rain picking up here down on the field. Good news for Panthers fans is Ron Rivera tells me there's no injury to Cam Newton. But goodness, he lit up this Panthers squad at halftime over missed opportunities and what he called stupid penalties. Meanwhile, Lovey Smith got to be happy with that start. He spoke to his team about ball security and making smart decisions. Chris, especially as this weather deteriorates. Ready! Blue ready! Blaze up! Cam Newton flips it to Doug Martin, who juggles but hangs on. It'll be third down. Jameis Winston, yes, but yet yeah, you saw him on that first snap. Extra careful with the with the exchange with the center. Again there on that snap. You know, this rain is so intermittent. It comes on, it goes off. It's going to be a factor later in this football game. Interesting that last week Mike Evans had 17 targets. He's only had three today. Vincent Jackson has had seven targets today, and he's made five catches, but he also has dropped the football. And now a third down and three. Winston to throw. He holds on too long and goes down. Ryan Dallaire, who was just picked up from the Redskins, signed off their practice squad, comes up with the sack for Carolina. Watch this out and up by Vincent Jackson. If Jameis Winston lets this ball go on time, it is a touchdown for the Buccaneers. He was looking there the whole way. He should have just let it fly. I know that pressure is in his face. That would have been a big play for Tampa Bay after that turnover. The adventures of Kyle Brinza. A 43-yard try, similar to last week when he made a 58-yarder and then missed a couple of easy ones. He missed from 29 right before the half. This from 43, the slick football. Jacob Shum, the holder. And he missed again. Not good. I don't know what to say about Kyle Prenza. I know they put a lot of faith in him. Beat out some kickers in the preseason, but 0 for 2 on the day. And Lovey Smith has got to make some decisions going forward. Another miss for rookie Kyle Brinza, who is 6 out of 12 in his career. Now, now, 500 might help if you're playing for the Rays. But 
as an NFL kicker, that's not going to cut it. Light, light, light. On first down, Jonathan Stewart with a big hole. Ball comes out again, but the Panthers have it. It's Ed Dixon. He grabbed it in the air, and it's going to be a Panther touchdown. How about that? What a play for Carolina. From good to bad to touchdown. I'm not even sure how you analyze this type of play. Jonathan Stewart doing what he always does. Runs hard, runs through tackles. Bucks come in, and Chris Conney gets his head right on the football. And Ed Dixon, I mean, Johnny on the spot is the most overused cliche ever. <laughs> but it doesn't get any better than, th than this. Right place, right time. But to Dixon's credit, he took it all the way in for the touchdown. And if you're looking as a Buccaneer fan, you have a drive at the end of the half, a positive drive at the end of the half, give yourself a chance for a field goal. No points. You get a turnover to start the second half. Kyle Brinza, no points. And then you get a freak play like this, and now all of a sudden you're down 24 to 14, and nothing is going right for Tampa Bay. Well, there's a reason Carolina is undefeated. And while the Bucs are one and two, 67 yards, a loose football in wet weather, but Dixon knows what to do with it for Carolina. Celebration on the Panthers' sideline as Ed Dixon grabbed the loose football and took it in for a touchdown. It's a 14-point Carolina lead, and it all goes back to the Kyle Brinza missed kick. Greg Olson was in stunned disbelief. As, as he gave Ed Dixon a hug there. After as that you were down. watching this. Sure. By the way, uh, the joy over there on the sideline for Tampa Bay. Brinza has now missed 16 points worth of kicks in the last six quarters. Five field goals and an extra point. And you have to wonder at what point Levy Smith and the Bucks start thinking about, do we have to think four downs and go without a kicker the rest of this game? Well, if I'm him, I'm thinking that right now. <laughs> You mentioned Mike Tomlin had that situation on Thursday Night Football this week. I don't see why it's any different right here. He has absolutely no confidence. He should in a kicker with that many misses. Touchback out to the 20. October, baseball, FS1. You're home for postseason play in the American League Division and Championship Series. There will be high drama and history. It begins Thursday on FS1, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Jameis Winston was a, a member, an outfielder, and a pitcher for Florida State as a reliever, a sub-2 ERA during his couple of seasons, drafted in the 15th round by the Texas Rangers who were in the postseason. That was back in 2012, but in the first round, the very first pick for Tampa Bay here in the NFL. Doug Martin. Jameis Winston, by the way, Tampa Bay's fifth first-round quarterback. If you go back to Doug Williams, Vinny Testaverde, Trent Dilfer, and Josh Freeman. But now he's down by 14. Well, he's going to have to come up with something special here in, this, in the second half. I mean, so many missed opportunities. Well, they thought there might be a late hit in there. It didn't look that way as Doug Martin carries and brings up third down. I think what they're arguing about is watch Ryan Delaire here, number 91 at the end of this play. Doug Martin's on the ground. And, I mean, helmet, helmet, that is absolutely a late hit. And it's not going to be called here on the field. It's too far past, but... The NFL will make that right come Wednesday next week, I'm sure. Now third down and two. Winston's pass is juggled and held out to by Mike Evans, who carried some Panthers with him to midfield. He oh, caught it. That wet football. He caught it, but this was not the surest of catches here by Mike Evans and he's got huge hands enormous hands but he makes the mistake of letting that football get to his body and I'm sure because it's a wet football he was trying to secure the catch but those pads act as trampoline and he almost dropped it well he admitted it last week said I was on me those drops I could have had a, a career day instead I don't know what I had and those drops a lot of them on third down hurt Tampa Bay but he held on there and now second down as they try and run the football in Carolina territory. 
Mike Evans' numbers for the day, and I got to imagine in the second half of this football game, being followed by Charles Tillman, Josh Norman's getting the assignment on Mike on a, a Vincent Jackson. He'll get even more targets. And now the sun is out. The rain has stopped for the moment. Pass is knocked loose by Tillman as it went into the arms of Brandon Myers. It would have been short of the first down. But that's what Tillman does. Third on the team in tackles. Another former Bear playing on this Carolina team. We know there are quite a few. It's amazing that he doesn't have a turnover calls yet because this is quintessential Charles Tillman. Always ball aware, playing the ball. That punch right there does it better than anybody in the history of football. He calls that incompletion. Looking for his first takeaway as a member of the Panthers. Jared Allen, Greg Olson, former Bears for Carolina. On third down, Winston lets it go. Behind Vincent Jackson, it's intercepted again. Guess who? Josh Norman. His second pick of the game. All the way inside the 35 of Tampa Bay. Josh Norman does an outstanding job of cutting underneath Vincent Jackson here and getting this interception. Jameis Winston throws the ball that's a little behind him. It's almost too easy for him. He's not going to drop that thing for this Carolina defense. Four takeaways. Norman with two interceptions today. He's got four interceptions for the year already, along with a recovered fumble. Five takeaways in four games for Josh Norman. Jonathan Stewart gets inside the 30. And with a 14-point lead and nearing field goal range, Panthers hoping to make it more difficult for a Tampa Bay comeback attempt. No, Carolina is somewhat conservative on, on offense the entire game, but, you know, they score a touchdown right here, Chris, make this a 21-point game. I just don't see Tampa Bay having the ability to come back. They just continue to shoot themselves in the foot. Mistake after mistake after mistake. It's been the undoing of this team all year. Cam Newton has it with room to run. And he will get a first down and go out of bounds. You talked about Cam Newton doing whatever is necessary early in the season against Jacksonville. He had to run a little bit more last week. He had to throw a little bit more. He's playing to the pace of his defense and the team around him. That's exactly what he's doing. I mean, if you look at his stat line right now, it's unimpressive. 67 yards passing. He's got about 25 yards rushing, I think, at this point. But at no point does he look out of control, and he's doing exactly what he wants with this offense, with this lead. After picking up 10, Cam Newton to throw, hesitates, has plenty of time, and that's it. Well, it was almost intercepted by Levante David, who dropped the ball. It was right in his hands. Well, I'm not quite sure what Cam Newton's thinking throwing this ball so late to Ed Dixon. But again, something that's indicative of this Buccaneer team, one of your A players, talked about it earlier, Levante David is a great football player in the NFL. There is no way he shouldn't catch this ball and have a turnover for Tampa Bay. He hasn't had a great start to this season, and he admitted it. C-plus grade he gave himself for the first three games, and that's about an F in my book right there, dropping that interception. Could have been a game changer. Cam Newton will keep it and has room to run straight up the middle after tiptoeing around. You know, we've been talking about the weather here all day. We want to send our thoughts out to those who have been affected by the heavy rain and wind and storm up and down the East Coast, especially in South Carolina. Some of the, well, they're calling it maybe the worst rain event in hundreds of years. More than two feet in some areas near Charleston. So a lot of football fans, Panther fans watching from there. Our thoughts are with you. Third and four. Time underneath completes. And Ted 
again is in for the touchdown. Gliding across. Second touchdown pass for Cam Newton today. Well, this is just like stealing here for this Carolina offense. They get him in man-to-man -man coverage. Ted Ginn runs underneath, and he is, his defender is nowhere. His defender is going to be Mike Jenkins right there, is nowhere near Ted Ginn. Look at all that space. Acres of room to just jaunt into the end zone, and another touchdown for Carolina. Makes this guy game almost feel unreachable for Tampa Bay. Two catches for Ted Ginn today, and both for touchdowns. He has become at least in terms of receivers after Greg Olson the go to guy with of course Kelvin Benjamin out for the year and Jericho Cotri out with a high ankle sprain. Graham Gano with the extra point gets now 31 to 10. Carolina the first few games of the season they've let teams hang around. Not today in Tampa. They're up 21 with Ted Ginn having the first two touchdown receiving game in his career. Thought of for a lot as a return specialist, and he's done well in that area in his second trip back to Carolina. And he's helped the Panthers. They're trying to win their eighth straight regular season game, longest currently in the NFL, going back to last year. Tampa Bay will take over at the 20-yard line. Four turnovers by the Buccaneers. And they're in jeopardy of losing again at home. Carolina's defense, 24 points off of turnovers today. They came in with 23 points off of turnovers in the first three games. Check, check. Check, check. Mark in six. Here we go. Doug Martin gets through the hole and up near a first down at the 30-yard line. Now they're opportunistic, this defense. They give up a lot of yards, but they don't allow teams to get into the end zone. And you got a rookie quarterback here in Jameis Winston, and he's made some mistakes. He's made some bad throws, had, had a ball tipped that was an interception. But you have A-plus players on this defense, Josh Norman being one of them, Thomas Davis, who we haven't mentioned much tonight, being another. And you add Jared Allen to this mix. I, I, I you got to like their chances on this side of the ball. Doug Martin will get into the clear. Doug Martin, Carolina Territory inside the 45 of the Panthers. Bucks are trying to run their way back into this game. Well, again, I don't think they want to put all this pressure on the shoulders of their young quarterback. So they give it to Doug Martin, and Doug Martin does what he's been doing all season long. He's got that great jump cut ability, finds some holes there, finds a gap in this offense. Look at these cuts. Feet are so quick on and off the ground. He looks really good this season, but when you're so far down in football games like they've been all year, you don't get a chance to utilize a guy like Doug Martin. 81 yards. That's a season high for him rushing. Winston on the move. Brought down hard at the 40. Good tackle by Ryan Dallaire, who has uh, stepped in nicely already with a sack in this game and chased down the 21-year-old rookie. That would look like it hurt. Ryan Dallaire jumped on his back as he was trying to get away from this pressure. That's just an awkward way to go down. But Jameis Winston, we know he's resilient. You know he's tough. Charles Sims is in. Here comes the flag. He's brought down right away. Only two penalties accepted on the Bucks today. Illegal shift, offense, number 18, never got to prior to the snap. It's a five-yard penalty, replay second down. Penalty will back up the Bucks. Well, one thing that, if you're the offensive coordinator, I'm sure Buck fans, Rondé, are saying, whatever you do, Jameis Winston, don't throw in the area of Josh Norman. No matter who he lines up with, let's see where he goes here. We said that early in the game. He's at the top of your screen right here. Josh Norman having a heck of a day. Against this pit, Tampa Bay offense, I wouldn't throw it on there. He's on Vincent Jackson for the moment. Pressure coming from Dallaire. And it's a sack. We thought Jared Allen would be the sack specialist brought in, but Ryan Dallaire has turned in a few for these Panthers. Well, Ryan Dallaire is in that position that Jared Allen will be playing once he gets more 
snaps under his belt. See him work him on, on Donovan Smith, the rookie right here. He just goes right by him. Donovan Smith has a tendency to be a, a, a waist bender. Gets his head down, and when he does that, defenders just throw him by, and Ryan Dallaire goes by and gets a big sack on Jameis Winston. And two plays in a row, he's had Jameis Winston had his knees beaten up. Donovan Smith was bothered by a knee in practice during the week off of last Sunday's game. Pass is caught. Vincent Jackson may have the first down. If not, he's close. Well, he I don't think he quite got this first down, but this is four down territory for sure for Lovey Smith. He's bringing Doug Martin some big bodies into the football game, and they're going to go for this. They absolutely should go for this. They got nothing going as a team. And a first down here maybe gives them a little bit of life, some juice, and they see if they can get back in this football game. Kevin Panfiel, backup left tackle, is in as an extra lineman on fourth and short. My finishes, my finishes. Ready. Blue white. What's up? Doug Martin has the first down. Doug Martin. Inside the 12 of Carolina. 24-yard run by Doug Martin, who is now over 100 yards rushing today. Watch Joe Hawley get out in front. He's pulling. Gives Doug Martin just enough of that seal on the corner to get a crease. And it's a big play on third down. Great call by Dirk Cutter. I think everybody was expecting either a quarterback sneak there or some kind of power strong to the other side of the ball. And Doug Martin gets a huge gain there. His eighth career 100-yard game. He gets the carry. It's down inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, we mentioned early in, the, in this football game that the problem on offense is not Doug Martin. Doug Martin, we know what he was in 2012, his first year in the league. He had a pretty precipitous fall off last year with some injuries that he had in 2013 that carried over. But we saw his recommitment in the preseason, his dedication to getting back as one of the top guys, and he's given us a display of that here today in Tampa. It's a contract year, had his first rushing touchdown of the season earlier in this game. Winston, end zone. He held on. Touchdown, Charles Sims. This was a really good job by Jameis Winston being patient in the pocket here. He's been under some duress here. Charles Sims sitting in this slot, working on Charles uh, Charles Davis, or Thomas, Thomas Davis, Davis, I'm sorry. And he just has so much time. Watch Jameis Winston, patient in the pocket, steps up, moving around, feet are always alive, and then with enough time, he finds Charles Sims getting free and converts a touchdown. And how about this? <laughs> They're booing the kicker the here. Extra point. Why would I mean? Would you go for two here? Give them the score. I, I mean, I, you know, sometimes I know it's early, but your kicker hasn't been very reliable, and every point matters when you're behind. I would hate to hear what's going to happen if he misses this. It's a 33-yard extra point. Kyle Brinza. It's good. Charles Sims, his second touchdown catch in as many weeks, and now the rookie Winston has thrown a touchdown pass in every game this year. Kyle Brinza, after the successful extra point, ready to kick off for the Bucks, who pumps some light back into the stadium here with a touchdown. And Fozzie Whitaker back deep for Carolina. So down two touchdowns, two extra points at the moment. Whitaker does a good job getting all the way up to the 30. Mike Alsot, of course, honored here by the Buccaneers at halftime, spoke to the Buccaneer fans, part of that Super Bowl team. We thought with our own Rondé Barber, part of that Buccaneer team. Look at all the great names. Buck fans notice if we were to, when your time comes, Rondé, we need to find a... <laughs> 
fun. I find a spot. So our crew, we looked at it. We thought that would be a good spot yeah. right there. That would work for me. When you make it, when your t what about your teammate John Lynch? Should we give him a spot as well? There's a spot over there on the side, right? You forgot my uh, accent on my E uh, right there. John <laughs> Day. <laughs> oh, look. The that, accent that, makes That's it, all you're going to give John long. Lynch a, a, a little mention, we <laughs> thought. <laughs> our colleague here at Fox, John Lynch, he'll be in there before me. Here's somewhat of a pecking order. Oh, there he is. He is definitely yeah. ahead of me. And he's calling the Viking Bronco game, part of America's game of the week that some of you will see later this afternoon on Fox. In the meantime, the Panther offense with 2.42 to go in the third. Cam Newton, plenty of time to throw. And right on target for a first down catch is Brenton Burson. We mentioned Burson from Charlotte, North Carolina. And Wofford College, same college as the owner of this team, Jerry Richards. In fact, as a kid, he used to go to the game and sit up in the owner's box and enjoy Carolina football. Brought up to the squad last week because Jericho Cotchery with the high ankle sprain. And it looks like Panthers are having headset problems. That's Ken Dorsey, the quarterback coach, who signals in the plays, having to use hand signals to get this play in. There's Brenton Burson again, a big gainer down inside the 30. So Cam and the Panthers, not just going to, and offensive coordinator Mike Shula just run the thing out here. They're coming out firing. Well, the Bucks go down and score on, on offense, and then Tampa Bay, we talked earlier about how they like the Brit blitz. You see the nickel cornerback goes in there, and it puts your safety on an island on a wide receiver. And Bradley McDougal wasn't able to keep up wasn't able to keep up with Britton Burson there. It's a huge gain. This Carolina offense, I love how they're continuing to be aggressive here. They, this lead was cut down to 14, and they're going to try to get it back to where it's more comfortable on this drive. After a gain of 30 yards, Greg Olson only two catches today. Burson has four already. Cam Newton keeps and gets near another first down. Cam Newton, 10 out of 18 through the air with a couple of touchdowns. And that was his ninth run of the day, averaging over four and a half a carry. Jonathan Stewart with 10 rushes today, 49 yards for the Panthers. Mike Tolbert with a first down to the 12. Let's get a game break. Check back in with Kurt Menefee. Kurt? Well, the Eagles come back as complete 16 in the fourth. Chris Ronde and Jed. Thank you, Kurt. Meanwhile, the Falcons leading 42 to nothing at home against Houston on their way to going 4-0 where the Panthers plan on going. Atop the NFC South. Cameron Artis Payne, the rookie from Auburn, carries. He came in late last week to carry when Jonathan Stewart, Fozzie Whitaker, and Tolbert were all beat up as the third quarter will come to an end. The Panther defense with four takeaways and the offense doing what it needs to do as they hope to remain undefeated. 31-17 going to the fourth. Rondé Barber, Chris Myers, Jennifer Hale, while you're watching from Tampa Bay. Well, Buccaneer fans are frustrated. Panther fans, this is what they've expected and gotten from their team so far. Cam Newton trying to take the offense in once again. 31-17 to start the fourth quarter, and the rain is back. It looks like the Bucs have man-to-man -man coverage again down here at the bottom. Cam Newton still has it. Philly Brown holds on. And it's tackled right away. That's his first catch. He didn't have a catch last week as Levante David, who dropped a sure interception earlier, made the tackle. Well, the biggest thing is the four turnovers, but also a couple of missed field goals by the Bucks kicker, Kyle Brinzer. Yeah, general missed opportunities for the Bucks. The missed field goals, of course, the dropped interception by Levante David. They had a, a turnover opportunity that you know Ed Dixon went 70 yards for a touchdown on it's just been a series of miscues for this Bucks team all day long Cam Newton he's going to be brought down at the 10-yard line Danny Lanzana 
leading the charge. It was interesting, those numbers, the Buccaneer offense actually had more total yards than Carolina, and they've also had the football longer in time of possession by some eight minutes as Jameis Winston looks on and thinks about overcoming the deficit. Well, that was a big stop for the Bucks defense here. If they would have went down 21 in this fourth quarter, I just, I, again, they've had so much, so many problems holding on to the football, securing the football today. It's hard for me to imagine them being able to come back, but a stop on defense makes it only a 17-point game and like their chances a little bit more. Graham Gano works that one through from 27 yards. Looked like it was angling off to the left, but Ron Rivera says that's good. And the Panthers remain in control. Well, I don't know if you can blame the weather for sloppy conditions, but the Panthers can stay true to form with now a 34 to 17 advantage. And six different times we have watched unofficially. We have st st statisticians. Stats for everything, They right? keep track of everything, and uh, that is unofficial at the moment, but I'm sure the players, and that's had something to do with the slick football, but Carolina has outplayed the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So if you're the rookie Jameis Winston, you've got one win on the road in New Orleans. Seems like the Bucs at home under Levy Smith, they haven't been able to win. What does he have to do here? Well, they haven't beat this team since 2012 when I was playing. It, it, it's, they got to continue to continue to be patient. I don't know if they can let Doug Martin bring them back into this football game, but it's only a 17-point lead at this point, so it's not completely dead for them. What they have, what they have to do, what Jameis Winston has to do, is protect this football. He can't afford another turnover at this juncture. They have any chance to get back into this game. And every point matters. If you do get it into the end zone, if you're the Bucks, why not go for two? Charles Sims is in. And just getting rid of it is Jameis Winston. And the tone was set early. The botch snap from center to Winston. And the interception, Josh Norman, second time this year, he has taken a, taken a pick back for a touchdown. And then the tip on this interception to Kirk Coleman. But then Jameis Winston later in the game throws a late ball out to Josh Norman, does what he's been doing all year, dominating his turnovers battle of this football game we talked about it being an advantage for Tampa but it has been in favor of Carolina all day wide open is Lewis Murphy and throwing to his left Jameis Winston missed him and now the sun is out again and the rain has stopped you throw in a couple of missed field goals by Kyle Brinza that certainly could have an effect on this, the ball popping out of Jonathan Stewart's hands and into Ed Dixon's where he takes it in for a touchdown. Well, it's always the little things, Chris, that make a difference in winning or losing in, in football. And the Bucks just haven't been doing them well. And the, and the big losses that they that they had week one and, you know, the points they've given up today, it's the little things that are killing them. On third down, Winston throws on the run to Evans, and that'll be short of the first down. Well, you know, you asked Ron Rivera about how they finished last year. They won a playoff game, of course, then ran into Seattle, finished the regular season with four straight wins. And you asked if there'd be some carryover in winning some of those tight games. And he said, well, I hoped that there would. And at least in the first three, there has been there, a carryover for this team. There absolutely has been. And we talked in the, in the open at the very beginning about why a lot of people aren't recognizing this football team after as good as they finished last season. They won a playoff game. They lost... Uh, in the second round of the playoffs but so far this year they've done everything necessary to win three games and it looks like they're on their way to winning their fourth here in tampa ted Ginn on the return stopped at the 39 yard line after the punt by jacob shum so the panthers they have the lead they have the football panthers in command try to go to four and oh in the nfc south that's what the falcons are trying to do is they lead at home 42 to 7 over Houston in the fourth. They have the Redskins coming up next weekend. We'll be there to call it with Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, first year head coach Dan Quinn, a defensive specialist from Seattle who has the Falcons on a roll, just like Ron Rivera has the Panthers on a roll. They've been winning with different people here. Ted get a couple of touchdowns last week, Greg Olson. A lot of receiving yards. The defense has been steady no matter what. Again, the third straight game without their star middle linebacker. And rookie Cameron Artis Payne getting some work in the backfield with Cam Newton. 
on the pitch to Payne, who's got plenty of room. He's got a first down. It slips a tackle and then goes out of bounds. Yeah, you mentioned earlier Brenton Burson's leading this team in receptions with, the, with those four catches. And we haven't mentioned Greg Olson. Early in the game, he had a couple of catches, but he's done what's necessary on this offense. Hasn't had to be the big play threat, but Brenton Burson, a couple of big plays on that last uh, that last possession by Carolina. And they're just doing what's necessary. You said it. It's exactly how you describe this Carolina football team. They do what's necessary to win football games. I want to talk about what Greg Olson said when we asked about the national perception of this team. As Cameron Artis Payne carries. I like that he said, you know, we and this is typical to say we don't worry about what the outside world says, but he said this isn't college football. You don't have to worry about votes or computers or winning by a certain margin. All you got to do is win the game. And that's what and that's what they've done. Nobody cares about style points in, in the NFL, but I got to tell you, the, the way that they win football games is impressive to me. It's, it's not very exciting on offense. They do generate some big plays with Cam Newton. They play solid defense. We've talked about it over and over again. They don't let people score points. And see, it's the best way to win in this league, I think. And this time, Cameron Artis Payne met hard by Gerald McCoy for a loss, bringing up third down. Let's check in again with Jennifer Hale. Well, Chris, the Panthers seem to be handling this shifting weather just fine. Graham Gano told me, hey, it's because we don't have an indoor practice facility. We've been practicing outdoors for the past two weeks in weather just like this. So, obviously, a good test run that is uh, proving fruitful for the Panthers today, Chris. And they thought, Jennifer, about flying early down to Tampa with all the rain and weather and the threat of more of that in their area, but decided to deal with it and come in on Saturday. Whatever Ron Rivera is doing, it's working. He's been working in young players like Cameron Artis Payne. Blitz coming. And Cam Newton gets away. And there goes Cam Newton. He's, just, he's not too young to make a move like that. Cam Newton is as advertised, didn't he? The pocket completely collapses around Cam Newton. Gerald McCoy has him dead to rights for a sack. And just a nice, subtle sidestep. Watch this pocket get real cramped on Cam Newton. He's been so good this year at avoiding those type of pressures. We saw it last week. Can do the same thing, get out of an impossible situation. Again, he does it and picks up an enormous first down to keep this drive alive. Ten carries, 53 yards for Cam Newton. He's thrown for a couple of touchdowns. And the clock continues to run. Cameron Artis Payne looking for somewhere to go and nowhere to go for the rookie from Auburn who was drafted in the fifth round. He's 25 years old. This is the kind of thing Ron Rivera does working in, whether it was last year, his offensive lineman that he knew needed to play, a running back in this situation. He's worked as linebackers. He calls it kind of a, a cross-training so that they're interchangeable in certain spots, and that has come into play with the injury to Luke Keekley and receivers as well. Well, down Jonathan, in that area. Yeah, Jonathan Stewart came into this game a little nicked up. They've, they've, they've had this under control for the most part, especially in the fourth quarter. You need to find out what you have in a young guy. So, yeah, I like him getting Cameron Artis Payne into the game, get some touches here. Mike, Mike. Mike Tolbert, who had a strained groin last week. That's when Stewart had the calf sprain. And this is for Olsen. Oh, and it was in and out of the hands, hit the ground. And that's incomplete. A tough catch, but Olsen almost made it. I'm telling you what, Chris, if he would have came down with this thing, and it, this is an impossible adjustment, and he just about <laughs> just about does it. Ball's thrown to his outside shoulder, and, and I don't know that that's worth reviewing, but the, the ref was right there. But, see, I think he just misses catching this. but Right here. Remember yeah, the, it's on the ground. But Gene Steratore went over before the game on – Catch, no catch. He was the official, the referee, right. the officiating crew with the Des Bryant call in the postseason against the Packers. Hey, Miles, the Miles, Just not Miles, as dramatic, but, Miles, <laughs> but the same referee worth now. pointing out. Yes. Miles, the right. Pressure picked up. 
Going deep for Philly Brown and overthrown. Altron Werner back there and McCoy down again. Here comes Graham Gano to try a field goal to make it 37 to 17. Looks like they're going to bring Nortman out instead. Okay. The kick would have been 53 yards. So interesting that Ron Rivera figures why why risk it given field position if there's a miss or a block. Nortman just kind of tries to drop that in. Fair catch called for by Rainey at the 14 of Tampa Bay with just over eight minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Jameis Winston will take another shot at it. Trailing 34-17. This season, stream live local Sunday afternoon games right on your smartphone with NFL Mobile. Buccaneers from the 14-yard line. Can you get weather down there as well, just to keep track of? Sure you can. Watch 25. Watch 25. And we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Sunday. Ready to go. Jameis Winston and Mrs. Evans, who was open over on the sideline. You're only down 17 points here. It feels like a lot more. Get opportunities like that. Mike Evans is wide open. And you just wonder if this team is even capable of making a furious comeback here with eight minutes left in this football game. Got to complete passes. Pitch and catch. Dirk Cutter said it last week. They haven't executed as well this week either. Winston is 17 out of 30. Three interceptions. And Doug Martin catches that. But gets little. Trey Boston was right there with him. Another young player that's being worked in behind Kurt Coleman and Roman Harper at the safety spot. From Fort Myers, Florida, and Trey Boston, a former North Carolina Tar Heel. Thomas Davis, who came in leading the team in tackles. A.J. Klein in the middle for Keekley, and of course, Josh Norman. Every, every game's a big show with him. Winston sideline caught and Murphy looks like he has enough for the first down. And they just got to find a way to continue converting first, first downs here, get down the field, but got to realize too that clock is their enemy at this point. Need some big plays, need something explosive. Carolina's going to keep everything in front of them. See if they take a shot here down the field, see if they can get back in this game real quick. That's high and incomplete for Vincent Jackson. Josh Norman started the season with a bang. When he ran this back for a touchdown and a win in Jacksonville, then he saved the Panthers' win against the Saints and got the Panthers their first touchdown today with a pick six and then made sure as he grabbed another interception that Winston could not lead a comeback. And there's another interception. Thomas Davis leaping in the air. The pass was intended for Mike Evans. This is Thomas Davis' second interception of the year. This one's spectacular. This ball was going to Mike Evans in front of Charles Tillman, but he is outstanding in underneath defense. Thomas Davis right here on your screen. Sorry about that. And yet another turnover here for Tampa Bay. And another takeaway for the Carolina Panthers. That's four interceptions thrown today by Jameis Winston. And with the ball spotted at the 29, Carolina takes over. And it's interesting, Ronnie, this Carolina offense, they have had now 15 straight regular season 100-yard rushing games, 17 if you count the postseason. That's currently the longest streak going in the NFL. Cameron Artis Payne carries. And today, in terms of rush yards, they're over 125, and they've averaged almost five yards a carry. Well, I, I got to say this about Tampa Bay's defense. It's somewhat 
demoralizing to have to play after all these turnovers. Just give, give credit to this Carolina defense. Obviously, forgetting the ball back for their offense, but it's, it's been easy on this offense. They've had short fields all day. Jameis Winston's not going to look back at this and say this was a, a, a piece of the puzzle where you're getting better. This was definitely a step in the wrong direction for that offense today. They've made it easy on Carolina so far. Mike Tolbert carries. Jameis Winston came in with only three interceptions. And today, the team, five giveaways, four of those on his interceptions. Well, you could really give give him all five of them with the, the fumbled exchange with Halley to start to start this this game and now I think everybody around Tampa and in this organization has a great feel about Jameis that he can be a, a, a nice young player he's got some mistakes to clean up he'll learn from this on third down and sixth backpedaling is Cam Newton and here comes a flag Will Golston was shoving him backwards now Cam may complain if he about if he doesn't get a call here. Let's see, he's smiling. But he's had the most the opponents have been called for 30 personal fouls against him over the years. That's the most of any quarterback since he's come into the league. I think he's laughing because he knows this is going to be intentional grounding. Yeah, never got back to the line of scrimmage. But it could be. It looks like the flag was out First early. Foul. Face mask. Defense number 92. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. And, of course, that penalty will negate. Correction. Correction. That penalty will be half the distance to the goal. And an automatic first down. Of course, that penalty penalty will negate what, what it had been, what would have been an intentional grounding call. And this is, he's right. He's got his face mask there. Cam Newton. <laughs> you see him there yelling at the ref before he even goes to the ground that it was face mask. So now that's uh, 31 personal fouls called against the opposition when they've been on Cam Newton again, most in the NFL since he has come into the league. And he's helping the official out. That's not a flop. He's just trying to make a point. <laughs> we kid, we care. I love how animated he gets. Gotta love it. I, so, I said this last week. He has so much fun playing the position, and it's easy when you're winning by 17 late in the fourth quarter. And that's what he told Jameis Winston. You know, Winston said, uh, "Remember, he spoke to me when I was at, uh, or spoke to a group of us, all American in high school. He said, I'm looking forward to watching him play in, in person this week, but I don't think he wanted to see this kind of game.' And Cam just said, other than be yourself, be a professional. Some of the advice he gave to him when they talked about being a number one overall pick." and the responsibilities that come with it after you've won a national championship and a Heisman. Well, there's a lot of pressure that goes with with that designation. Not only the Heisman, but the number one pick in the draft. Everybody has high expectations. You marry that with the fact that the pe person that everyone was arguing could have or should have been the first pick is taken second with Marcus Mariota, who's in Tennessee, and he'll be forever compared, frankly or unjustly. And that's Cameron Artis Payne, who backed up Trey Mason at Auburn. And he had a breakout year with over 1,600 yards, but at age 25, as we said in the preseason, he won a, won a spot on this Carolina team behind Jonathan Stewart, Fozzie Whitaker, and Brandon Wager, who has been featured on that NFL Network show, Undrafted, the free agent running back. Let's get a game break. Check in with Mike Hill. See how the Bills and Giants are going, Mike. And you know the Giants have had issues in the fourth quarter this season finishing well. Uh, this helps. Uh, Rashard Jennings, look at the effort right there. Bakari Rambo, yeah, get out of my way. 51-yard touchdown. Giants get the two-point conversion up 24-10 in the fourth. Chris Rondé, back to you. All right, thank you, Mike. Jets have already won today, beat the Dolphins over in London. The Eagles lead the Redskins. Atlanta blowing out Houston. The Bears have gone in front of the Raiders. Cincinnati undefeated, winning at home, trying to go to 4-0 against Kansas City. 29-18 in the fourth quarter. And 
the Panthers ready to go to 4-0, as are the Falcons. Cam Newton has it, and incomplete. Fired it in the end zone. Devin Funches could not hold on. I haven't mentioned Devin Funches' name all day. A little behind and a little low, but it's catchable. But good defensive play by Mike Jenny. Jenkins there for that incompletion. Funches made a, a tough catch last week that held out an important drive in a win against the Saints. They're trying to ease him in, the second-round draft pick, as Gano tries a 27-yard field goal to make it 37 to 17. They keep going to the left, but he's keeping them in. Bobby Smith looking up at the score. A fork in the road game for the Buccaneers. Some of the moments of the game here in Tampa Bay with Rondé Barber, Chris Myers. Glad to have you watching. Fans that have hung around through the weather and some of the frustration from the hometown box. Now a 20-point Carolina lead. Panthers kicking off with just over four minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Bobby Rainey is going to bring it out. Stop short of the 20-yard line. Joe Webb, reserve quarterback and receiver on the special teams play. Coming up, America's Game of the Week, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers going up against Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers. Some will see other games. Our NFL doubleheader continuing on Fox. You know, I talked about a, a fork in the road game for Tampa Bay being 1-2, and two, Rondé. They could have gone to 2-0 and oh in the division having defeated the Saints earlier this year. And this is, I mean, you create quite a gap now. It's its only the quarter mark of the season, but between the Falcons and the Panthers after the poor showing here. Ready. Ready. And Winston tries to get rid of it. Here's a flag. And again, Ryan Dallaire was ready to sack him. Intentional grounding, offense number three. Although the quarterback is out of the pocket, the ball does not get back to the original line of scrimmage. Spot foul, loss of down, second down. And that's the second such call against Winston in today's game. He's got to be aware if he's going to get rid of it, even if he's out of the pocket, to get the throw the ball back to the line of scrimmage. Well, his, uh, his fellow rookie, Donovan Smith, didn't help him out at all again over on that left, that left offensive tackle on that position. But you talked about this team and I think today you said it was a big game had the opportunity to go 2-0 in the division even their record at 2-2 two two against a division opponent and you know I'm sitting up here wondering if they're just if they're ready to compete yet I know they're young they have a young quarterback they have two young starters on the offensive line and, and I think it answers the question itself the penalties the mistakes you know the turnovers they're, they're just not ready to play against a team that's as good as Carolina and Carolina going for its third consecutive division title as Winston dumps that off to Doug Martin. Winston was arguing before that there was a receiver in the area, but the officiating crew wasn't buying it. Well, and I think Tampa Bay fans, Ronde, expected with Lovey Smith, known for defense and a, a, a kind of team that thrives on takeaways, that they would see a lot of that. Yes, a rookie quarterback is one thing to deal with, but... And the defense, you can't fault them today with all the giveaways by the offense, but certainly they haven't done their part. They haven't. They've, they struggled against the run last week. They've struggled against it as well this week. They just they have to play better. They, there's a lot expected of that defense, and they haven't produced so far this season. Doug Martin has had a very good game and fights hard to get up across the 26-yard line. He's over 100 yards rushing today. 
And if there's one positive of this game, yes, it is Doug Martin. He's shown some ability to catch the ball, which I sometimes question about this guy, but his running prowess today has been outstanding. It's been the one bright spot of this football team today and something you can build on going forward. He was a Pro Bowl pick as a rookie and led the Bucks in rushing last year, even though he missed five games, and he's been the, the centerpiece of the offense as it is fourth down and three, nearing the two-minute warning. Winston tries to get the first down. Let's see the official right there where he stepped out of bounds and the spot. That spot. Well, Gene Sterator is signaling as if he got the first down. And there's a challenge by Ron Rivera. Yeah, he looked like he was short. The signal was first down. Rivera, who's already won a challenge today, says, I don't care what the score is. He didn't get the first down. Carolina is challenging the ruling on the field as it relates to a first down. Time out. Two minutes and 29 seconds with a challenge from Ron Rivera. It was ruled a first down run. Ron Rivera challenged even with a 20-point lead, but he's a prideful. He's a former linebacker himself. He wants his defense to get the stop and have the offense take over. Well, we're looking at this left foot to see if it's out of bounds. It's where the ball crosses. And by every angle that we saw during the break, this is this is the correct call by Gene Steratore to give him the first down. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It will be a first down Tampa Bay. Carolina will be charged with this first time out of the half. Carolina is also out of challenges for the remainder of the game. Good job by Gene yep. Steratore to stay professional there. He's and that's like he was a, trying not to laugh. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, come on, Ron. But that's why you have replay. It's about getting things right, whether it's from a challenge or the review group or the referee on the field. It's practice. And right? ultimately, so right, it's practice for it. Might as well empty the bucket. You don't need the challenge anyway later in this game. Charles Sims carries on the ground. This Carolina defense, Rondé, as we near the two-minute warning, five takeaways today. So they now have ten takeaways in the first four games of the season. It's a winning edge for this football team. We know how good they are, you know how good some of their players are. You take the ball away, it makes you so much more. And that's a lunge towards the 40 by Vincent Jackson as we hit the two-minute warning. And the Carolina Panthers making life difficult for Winston and the Bucks. Two minutes remaining. Buccaneers with the football, a different kind of football with Mexico and the U.S. Ronnie, I know you're a big soccer fan. I am. By winning the Gold Cup a couple of weeks ago, Mexico gets to face the United States in the Confederation Cup playing. I'll be watching on FS1. So you know what an analyst, you could you could go right from talking National Football League <laughs> to soccer, an international analyst. Well, this hasn't been a good day for Manchester United. They lost early, the Glazers. Losing here today, frustrating. Oh, I and you. you're and, and, and frustrating too for the Glazer family owners of this Buccaneer franchise with the investment in Jameis Winston and Lovey Smith, hoping for better results. As Winston's pass is on target. And of course, the Panthers in the bit of a prevent here. Vincent Jackson again with his sixth catch over 90 receiving yards. But Bronde, this Carolina defense, we've mentioned no Keekley. Charles Johnson, their top pass rusher, goes on the, the injured list. They add Jared Allen. Again, Vincent Jackson. Yeah, he steps out of bounds. And yeah, we haven't even mentioned Jared Allen. We highlighted him a little bit at the beginning of the game. He was in there. Uh, he was obviously going to be on a, a pitch count today, but you know, they're, they're, they're so good right now against this team at least the ryan delaire a guy who was on the street as of you know wednesday comes in and puts a lot of pressure he's had himself a good game and good game for vincent jackson in a losing effort with eight catches over 133 yards ready. 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 
too little too late for Tampa Bay. And almost another takeaway. Here comes a flag. Trey Boston had a shot at that interception. Winston's pass intended for Lewis Murphy. Incomplete flag. Winston was trying to go to Lewis Murphy. Prior to the pass, illegal contact, defense, number 54, five-yard penalty, automatic, first down. The call on rookie linebacker Shaq Thompson. Well, the Bucks will fall to one and three. They have Jacksonville here, and then a bye week before they go on the road at Washington, and then a, another divisional game against Atlanta. The Falcons on their way to four and zero. Oh. Five twenty-five. Watch about the hot. Hey, Ram, fifty-four, Ram, fifty-four. Sunday. Let's go. Jameis Winston with another completion to Jackson. Winston over 200 yards, nearing 300 yards passing as he hurries the team to the line. I kind of wondered where that was moments ago. Throws back, tipped away, and incomplete. The Panthers, meanwhile, get a bye with that 4-0 record and then at Seattle. Now, he did tell us, Ron Rivera, that the concussion protocol, the last phase for Luke Keekley, the neurologist, he's passed everything up to that point. And maybe he'll be ready for the Seahawks. Then they're home with the Eagles and the Colts. It's pretty good quarterbacks coming up on the schedule for this Carolina defense that they'll go against. Well, this is a 4-0 football team, and I, I'm somewhat surprised that they started off as quickly as they did. They got some teams that didn't have great quarterbacks early in the year. Vincent Jackson is in the end zone on the pass from Winston for a Tampa Bay touchdown. But they've done what they've needed to do all season long. Took care of Jacksonville early. Houston didn't last week and this week. They've done enough to win the football game of the day. It's, it's been a showcase, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to matter. And this is a great throw by Jameis Winston. Look how tight that spiral is. Vincent Jackson, you said it, a little, little – Way too little, too late. The mistakes early in this game make this touchdown irrelevant at this point. But going back to Carolina, you know, I, I, I like where their, their trajectory is. You know, you talked about how they finished last season. Come out, you start fast, you get four wins before the bye, you get a chance to get a little bit healthy, and he missed another one. Wow. Kyle Brenza, I, I mentioned going for two would have been a better option. I'm not a coach. We're just up here calling a game. But I think... I think a lot of fans feel the same way, and maybe somebody on that staff will reconsider where this is going. Missed an extra point last week. I, I can't even add up all the points left on the left It's not worth the adding it up. The, they didn't bring in a kicker this week. There's no chance there won't be 15 of them in next week. He won a competition in the preseason over the starting kicker last year, Connor Barth, who'd been here for years. I got to imagine... Somebody will be in, in, in this week, and Kyle Brenza has only done it to himself. One three today, made one field goal, but the extra point that he missed today, he missed one last week, it's just unacceptable. Well, and you, you feel bad. He's a rookie. He's a young man who gets a chance in the NFL, has a strong leg, got off to a, a good preseason. As you said, he had other kickers. He had to be good enough to win the job from, one of those being former Buck Connor Barth, who was brought back. And now in a... Pressure situation. This wasn't even a pressure situation last week, more so, where he cost them in a closer game. Well, look at look at the two kicks that he missed. One right before the half. One right after the half. He makes either one of those. It's a one-point ball game at that point. I think just just having the those points on the board changed the dynamic. The onside kick and the Panthers are on it. Let's check in for another game break with Mike Hill. All right, guys, second game of the day. Some of you guys will see the Packers and Niners. Navarro Bowman trying to get his defense fired up. They've lost two in a row. Tough task against this guy, MVP. You know who he is, Aaron Rodgers. 10 TDs, no picks this season. Some of you will see this game. Others will see the Vikings and the Broncos coming up next. Thanks, Mike. And, and while Carolina has showed you a lot of different ways they can win, uh, the Buccaneers have showed you a number of ways they lose and and not only Kyle Brinson but obviously turnovers some defensive opportunities that were missed as a as a professional kicker Brinson six out of 12 with field goals six out of eight with point afters that have been 
made or missed depending upon which side of the issue you're on. So that's one of the many issues that this Tampa Bay team will have to deal with. Bonus coverage is coming up with the Giants and the Buffalo Bills. Giants leading 24-10, just under two minutes to play. Today's game produced by Michael Birch, directed by Michael Frank. Our technical producer, Tom Lynch, technical director, Ernest Bauer, broadcast associate, Mike Strack, associate director, Tava Strand, Kevin McCluskey, always a great job with audio. And in the booth, James Petralka and Rick Odioso. The Panthers will go to 4-0. Last time this kind of start, they went all the way to the Super Bowl. The Bucks slipped to one and three. For Ronde Barber, I'm Chris Myers. Let's head back to our Fox Studios in Los Angeles.